Hi, welcome to The Print. My name is Dishalu Walia. I'm an archaeologist and I write regularly on archaeology here for The Print. And in this week's column, we'll be talking about a very interesting aspect of our history, which is usually never discussed in public domain. Uh, and that is, uh, you know, the Iron Age sites and sites which go beyond the Harappan frenzy. Uh, in 2020, uh, uh, the Nirmala Sitaraman, uh, finance minister of India, she come, she in the union budget declared uh, bu uh, about 3,150 crores for the development of five important archaeological sites. Now, these archaeological sites were spread across the country, including the sites of Rakhikari uh, in Haryana, which is in Harappan metropolis, site like Dholavira, which has recently been inscribed as UNESCO World Heritage Site. You have Shivsagar, the, uh, uh, the Aham monuments of Shiks at Shiv Sagar in Assam. And then you have a site uh, which is seeped into our epigraph, uh, our epics and our, our memory, our historical memory, which is a site of Hastinapur, which is linked to the Kuru uh, dynasty of the Mahabharata. Along with all of this, there was another site which is very interesting and which is really less talked about in public domain. That is a site of Adi Chanalur in southern Tamil Nadu. The, the site is an Iron Age burial site, and it's one of the largest and well-preserved site. Interestingly, just a year after this allocation and declaration of about over 3,000 crore budget, the development of something called as the iconic site, uh, um, Nirmala Sita Rama, and she visited the site and she laid the foundation of a new museum which were to be set, which were to be built at this very site. After that, a lot of work was promised, but as things go in this country, that didn't uh, pan out, including all the other four iconic sites. Museums did not come up at any of these sites. The work is still going on at Rakhigari, so is at, um, at Dolavira, and at Shivsagar, and also at Hasnapur. So naturally, at Aij, uh, Adi Chalanur, also, the site museum is still pending. A couple of years ago, um, uh, the a PIL was also filed to know the status of the work done on this particular site museum. Uh, the the Madras High Court has asked the ASI and other stakeholders to reply and and to actually justify why the site museum is not yet there, whereas the budgeting was done about four years ago. Now this is one of the aspects of why a lot of archaeological sites don't pop up in the tourism uh, map or the map of cultural significant sites. But Adi Shanarur, unlike all the other four sites, it's very, very important. And it's very important to talk about this site in public domain, to uh, spread awareness about the site's history and its significance so that it's it becomes part of your uh, itinerary, your travel itinerary, and also becomes part of uh, more research. The site was actually discovered about 140 years ago in 1870 by a German um, uh, enthusiast, F. Jagger, who actually haphazardly excavated, this, excavated the site, who took away all the antiquities with him to back to Berlin and rest uh, all the other records he left with the state. And uh, with this, at least the government uh, back then in Tamil Nadu got to know about the importance of the site. And that attracted a lot of scholars' attention. Uh, the uh, the object of its importance was actually the burials, the urn burials. Now, if I talk about the urn burials in modern, popular, contemporary uh, understanding, urns are these pots where the ashes of the dead are buried, and then usually, as you see in the movies, are kept on the mantle, and then that is where the the person who had died stays with the people. Uh, you know, the memory stays with the person, and that's how you memorialize the person who have died. In the case of Adi Chanalu. Uh, the the body of the deceased has been put uh, in in these urn burial urns, which are quite big in size, not as small as we we are we usually see in a lot of movie, movies. Uh, they are about you know the 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 mouth radius goes all the way to six meters, so they are quite big urns. Uh, so there are different types of burials being found at this particular site where you have. 
double double burial where two skeleton remains have been found in one urn or a child's burial has been found along with uh, a mother's burial there are also instances where secondary burial has been done whereas the person was buried somewhere else and then the remains were collected and reburied in the urn at the site of adichanalu initially the site after it attracted the uh, attraction of a lot of scholars uh, alexander re of archaeological survey of india started its excavation in 1889 and he continued to excavate the site for a couple of a couple of years till 19 Four. Uh, it was his excavation which has left um, a lot of important data for us to analyze. Post that, not many excavations have been done, and whatever excavations have been conducted, they are uh, they are short period and only been restricted to smaller areas. So it was uh, actually Alexander Lee's excavation which has uh, mapped out not just Adichanalur but also similar sites of similar cultural period. across the uh, across that river valley uh, so adichanalur uh, according to him uh, was a site where uh, you know there were not only burials but also a habitation site uh, where people would would reside unfortunately he could not excavate the uh, habitation site but he in his records did pinpoint to where the habitation would have been he excavated the burials extensively and in his excavations he found that burials were uh, the, uh, the deceased been buried not just in an urn empty handed but with a lot of grave goods which included like copper and iron uh, implements since it belonged to the iron age period and also gold um, uh, gold objects as well a lot of semi precious stone beads have also been found uh, with the grave goods uh, so but his maps uh, he actually recorded about 5000 artifacts and these artifacts were like a guess uh, like an index for the future uh, work to be conducted in this part of uh southern india it was only after him uh in 2004 uh where a archaeological survey of india re excavated a portion of the site the idea for this excavation the aim was of this excavation was to find out a the habitation site and also these plans were not up to the mark uh his plans were archaic so uh, archaeologists and scholars were unable to identify uh the features that he uh, spoke so highly of in his records so they decided to re-excavate the site and to map out the site with new age uh, recording and um, a lot of other data so uh, the uh, the one year that asi has excavated they have done a lot of work uh, which was not done in last over 100 years uh, uh, right from uh, the ex uh, first recording of adichanalur they excavated a portion of the habitation site where a uh, pottery kilns to bead making factory bead making workshop have been found they also excavated a couple of more uh, burials where anthropological physical anthropological studies have been conducted which were missing also paleopathology was also conducted where you try to understand the diseases people have suffered in the past in the ancient society so that work has also been conducted during this particular excavation after that in um, in in 2019 to 22 again archaeological survey of india along with the state archaeology department did conduct a uh, site after it became the iconic site so the idea of it to be declared as iconic site was the reason for it for first was that it is the largest well preserved iron age urn burial site in not just southern india but across the subcontinent just like what we find in the in the neolithic period at mehergarh this site also could give a lot of clues about how the culture has evolved in this part of india so uh, because of which it was protected very early on it was in fact protected about 114 acres of land was protected uh, protected very early on in 1921 right after re's excavation which ended in 1905 uh, but the excavations were you know far fetched they were not in continuation which should have been the ideal case if you really need to understand a site holistically and also the culture holistically in 2019 and 2022 uh the state department um, of archaeology the tamil nadu state department of archaeology also conducted excavations at 
other sites which are uh, spread uh, in the nearby area, which are within this uh, the radius of Adi Chanalur. So, uh, however, with in case of this particular site, after 2005's excavation, uh, the excavation which was conducted after its declaration of iconic site did not actually yield much of the evidence M most of it was already known during his uh, excavation and then of course after uh, afterwards during asi's excavation but a lot can be done at the site and unfortunately nothing is been happening right now however state archaeology department did a uh, 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 de decide that they're going to build another museum uh, where they're going to house all the antiquities from Adichal Noor and other sites and also these ant antiquities which are in Edmore, which are uh, exhibited in Edmore Museum at another museum, but not at the site museum, which uh, Nirmala Sita Raman herself has laid the foundation of in 2021. Now, the question here is when you have a very large budget like this, over 3,000 crores, and you have just five sites and few more uh, sites to actually develop as an iconic site, an iconic archaeological site of India, what is the delay? Money is certainly not the delay, because in archaeology, usually the projects uh, are stopped like in the case of Adi Chanalur, you have excavation which was conducted in 1900s and straight away in early 2000s is because uh, uh, there were no funding, there was no attention to this part of this, this aspect of archaeological history and therefore the project did not continue as it should have for at least two to three decades. Uh, but now you have funds, there are adequate funds to develop not the site museum but to develop amenities for tourists but to have uh, interpretation centers and also to do conservation of sites which can be opened up for the people to see because if you go to the site and if you don't see pictures you will not be able, be able to understand what actually i am talking about so that was the intention of iconic sites project uh, but the stakeholders are still um, you know, it's been four years since, and we are going to be going into 2025, which will mark five years of this whole declaration and allocation of funds, still no site museum. Uh, hoping that, um, you know, we are hoping that uh, this work resumes again, and maybe sooner or later we'll have more sites, uh, more uh, uh, sites included in this project. And we also have more, uh, we have a new museum come up at Adi Chanalur, which will actually make it an iconic site. And the reason for me to write is also to, to tell our uh, listeners and viewers that if you ever decide to go to Tamil Nadu and Southern Tamil Nadu, do visit Adi Chanalur. There is a small museum, which is not as big as it should be, but do visit the site and make it part of your itinerary. So it actually becomes truly an iconic site like we have in the case of Thola Vera. Uh, if for further detail and more detail, uh, details on the excavation and its finding, you can read my column. The link will be in the description box below. And for more and more interesting uh, videos like this and stories like this, do follow the print and follow it on all the social media platform and subscribe to their um, uh, plan as well. Uh, thank you so much for listening and uh, we'll meet soon. Thank you so much.